Our friend Ajahn just spotted the upcoming 2018 Bentley Continental GT wearing barely any camouflage in Germany. Bentley's most popular model is said to be revealed in due course and will feature many exciting new features. Bentley recently held an exclusive VIP preview event in Munich, where it showed the complete vehicle to a select few customers. The new Continental GT will be built on the MSB platform which is shared with VW Group colleague Porsche. The chassis of all new Continentals will therefore be built in Porsche's Leipzig plant. The same platform is used for the latest Porsche Panamera. It is much lighter than Bentley's previous platform and has a more favorable weight distribution. What's more exciting is that the new Continental GT will feature many design cues from the well-received EXP 10 Speed 6 concept car. It gets larger headlights at the front, carefully shaped taillights at the rear, but will maintain the large oval exhaust tips that have become so characteristic for Bentley over the years. We expect the 2018 Bentley Continental GT to be offered with the Mighty W12 from the Bentayga, as well as an updated 4.0-liter twin-turbo V8 which also powers the Panamera Turbo, and possibly a V6 plug-in hybrid powertrain. One-third of drivers involved with ride-sharing services such as Uber, Ingogo, GoCatch, and RideBoom, are yet to register for GST or to fully declare their income. Assistant Commissioner Tom Wheeler said more than 100,000 individuals have received a payment for a ride-sharing service since the Australian Taxation Office started collecting data in August 2015, but about one-third of them still have not registered for GST and or fully declared income. The ATO has written to 60,000 drivers looking to make extra cash by transporting passengers on popular ride-sharing services, reminding them of their obligations. Uber and other ride-sharing drivers must be registered for GST following an ATO ruling that took effect in August 2015. Before that they had been able to avoid GST payments by arguing they fall under the $75,000 turnover threshold at which GST applies. Uber legally challenged the ruling, saying they were not like a taxi service, but in a landmark decision in February the federal court agreed with the ATO that Uber drivers were like a taxi and thereby have to register for and pay GST even if they fall under the threshold. Mr. Wheeler said the ATO had written to 60,000 drivers since August 2015, and would continue to write to other drivers who come onto their radar. We are seeing numbers of drivers growing, but there's quite a significant churn rate, he said. Our monitoring tells us that only half of these 60,000 drivers received a payment for driving in the recent January to March 2017 quarter. A large number of those drivers were registered for GST in meeting their obligations, but some drivers were yet to register. The ATO has more work to do in educating drivers about their tax obligations and making sure they comply, Mr. Wheeler said. The ATO collects more than 650 million pieces of data each year and has recently started receiving information directly from ride sourcing facilitators financial institutions and individuals using ride-sharing apps providing credit card details to companies like Uber. This also means that if you misreport your income, red flags will be raised in our systems and we'll start asking questions, Mr. Wheeler said. Since the sharing economy was a new part of the economy, he said the ATO would give people extra time to get their tax affairs in order. But if ride-sharing drivers were still not registered towards year's end, and or hiding income, the ATO may need to take compliance action including reviews and audits. If you're providing ride sourcing services and do not have an Australian business number and GST registration, you should make this your first priority, he said. By reporting your ride sourcing income and GST you can also claim tax deductions and GST credits in respect of your business expenses, such as your car, fuel, servicing and your smartphone and data usage. At tax time often claims made for work-related expenses were for items that were for both business and private use. 
Mr. Wheeler reminded taxpayers that you can only claim the part that relates to your business use. Employers letting their staff use ride-sharing services, rather than a licensed taxi, could be liable for fringe benefits tax FBT. Uber, which has long argued it is not a taxi service, told Fairfax Media that it now hopes the ATO will treat it like a taxi for FBT purposes. The Australian Taxation Office ATO, has reminded Uber drivers that they have information from third parties that will allow them to track any income is omitted from tax returns. With the tax return season due to start Monday, ATO Assistant Commissioner Tom Wheeler said his organization harvests more than 650 million pieces of data every year to match up against what individuals are actually reporting. We recently started receiving information directly from ride sourcing facilitators to better support drivers to report their tax obligations correctly, he said. This also means that if you misreport your income, red flags will be raised in our systems and we'll start asking questions. While businesses that generate less than $75,000 per year do not have to register for GST, Taxi drivers must report everything, and Uber and other ride-share drivers are counted as operating a taxi for this purpose. If you're providing ride sourcing services and do not have an Australian business number and GST registration, you should make this your first priority, said Wheeler. By reporting your ride sourcing income and GST you can also claim tax deductions and GST credits in respect of your business expenses, such as your car fuel, servicing and your smartphone and data usage. The ATO first warned in January that data matching, similar to Centrelink's controversial welfare overpayment crackdown, was actively in progress to scrutinize Australians making an income from sharing economy apps such as Uber, Airbnb and Airtasker. Rideshare drivers were generally classified as sole traders, according to Wheeler, and as such could use the My Deductions tool in the ATO app to make their tax record keeping easier. Jim Kennington joked he thought the ute he was driving was going to disappear when it got swallowed up by a sinkhole in Perth's north. The 50-year-old was driving the Isuzu ute on Friday morning when he turned onto a roundabout in Regent Waters Estate in Wanora when he suddenly felt the car sink. I didn't know what was going on and all of a sudden the driver's side wheel started to slowly sink, he told Way today. Luckily, I was going really slow because it was a suburban roundabout and I could see water on the road. The next thing I know there was water up to my ankles and I had to climb out of the passenger side door. Mr. Kennington, who works for Lincoln Century, a company that made cabinets, windows and door hardware said over the next five to ten minutes the car kept sinking further into the hole. He feared the car was going to disappear out of sight. You see all these sinkholes around that world that swallow up cars and houses quite rapidly, so I was wondering what was going to happen, he said. But it wasn't panic stations because it was happening pretty slowly. Mr. Kennington said the Ute only suffered minor damages and should be back on the road in no time. A self-employed truckie called Andrew posted a photo on Twitter of the Ute, nose first in the hole. The picture shows what appears to be three emergency service workers standing around trying to fathom what happened. Police are on the hunt for three people after a woman who died in a car crash in Sydney's West on Saturday morning was removed from the vehicle and left on the footpath by the other passengers, who then fled. The station wagon hit a concrete island on Waldron Road in Chester Hill about 6.20 mm and the driver lost control and hit a power pole, causing extensive damage to the rear passenger side where the deceased woman was sitting, Inspector Daryl Haas from Campsie Local Area Command said. The woman, who was believed to be about 35, suffered fatal injuries to her head and body. CCTV footage suggests the other three passengers are male, Inspector Haas said. There's a possibility that one of the males was limping from the scene, he said. We've made inquiries with the local hospitals, but that's as far as we've got at this stage. He said a witness suggested the car was traveling at high speed. The car was full of paint supplies, 
brushes and rollers that are all over the road now, Inspector Haas said. It's possible they could have been heading off to work. A spokesman for NSW police said it did not appear that drugs or alcohol were involved, but investigations are ongoing. Once we track the three people down, these are all questions we can ask them, the spokesman said. Unfortunately all we've got at the moment is a deceased woman and the remains of a Holden Commodore. No other vehicles are believed to have been involved. Police have established a crime scene at the site of the crash.